in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can count features in a GenBank file using Python. In order to follow this tutorial, you need to have the following libraries installed, BioPython and Panda. So you can use the pip command to install them and these are the commands that you can use to install those two libraries. I also have a video that shows you how to install Python libraries and I'll leave the link in the description box. This tutorial will use a publicly available data and I will leave that link in the description box as well. I also encourage you to watch my video on how to read and assess GenBank files using Python just to have an idea of what GenBank files are and do a quick exploration on your own. So now that we have everything set, let's start the tutorial. We will begin by first downloading the GenBank file. And to do that, we will visit the link for the data and this is the link i will leave the link in the description box so that you can quickly use that to visit this page so the genome we are going to use is a bacterial species that's the staphylococcus aureus and we are using this particular strain so to download this particular genome in the GenBank format you first come to this section here this section here and then you click on this Sent to, and then you make sure complete record is checked. Then in the choose destination, you make sure file is checked. And then when you come to the format, let's use GenBank for this format. Once you have everything checked as instructed, then you click on the create file button, which is here. So click on it, and then you'll be asked to download so you save the file and you save it at a directory where you can easily access it i will save it on my desktop and i'm going to give it a name that is the name of the string that's m a m 4 a i'll leave the extension here so let's download it So download is complete. So let's quickly check it out. I save it on my desktop. So this is the file. So it's m48.jb. That's the file extension. If you are using Windows, it's possible that the file extension might be absent or might be hidden. So try and then enable it to see the extension. So now let's go back to the Python terminal to proceed with the rest of the task so on the python terminal or interface you will first import our library so let's start we will import the bio python first so we'll say from bio import seek io then we import pandas import pandas as pd then we import another package which is the counter so we say from collections import counter this particular function here is inbuilt in python so we don't need to install it it comes packaged with python so now we have all our libraries and packages um, imported so the next thing to do is to set the file path where the file path um, should give you directions to the downloaded GenBank file. So this is my file path. I saved it on my desktop. So this is how I'm going to set my file path. So file path is equal to slash home. This is my file path. Please note that your path is likely to change or be different from what I have here because you'll be using a different computer. So I have it set. 
the next is to read the Zen Bank file. That's the next thing to do. So we read the Zen Bank file using file Python. So we say Zen Bank object equals to seek io dot read file part. So that's the file part that we set. Then we indicate the format which is JB. So we have read the file successfully. After doing that, we will now extract all the feature types. I will also encourage you to first watch my video on how to read and access the bank files just to understand some of the things we are doing here. So let's proceed. So I'll obtain all the feature types using this command here. So I'll say all feature types. I'll use a list comprehension. So I'll say it's equals to feature dot type for feature in gen bank objects dot features. So this command will give me all the feature types. So let's run it. So it's run. So let's check all the features. So we can say learn all feature types. So we have 6,513 features. Okay. And all these features, their respective types that are given in this list here. Of course, we can't display all of them here, but you can just get quickly get all the feature types using this command just to have an idea of the feature types we are dealing with. So we can say feature types is equals to set or feature types. So we have this, let's add another one just to print it. So you can say print feature types. Okay, so we have all the feature types showing here. Please note that we have this curly bracket here because we, we've made this a set object. Okay, so don't confuse this with a dictionary object. This is a set object. Now notice that we have some feature types here. And then, depending on your question, you might want to remove or delete some of them, such as maybe source, and then maybe regulatory. So you can choose to do that. But let's maintain this for now. We will remove them in the downstream analysis. So let's proceed. So the next thing we do is now count the various features. And how do we do this? This is where the counter comes in. So you will say feature count is equal to counter or feature types. So what it does is you take the feature types here and then count how many there are in this particular list because this list contains all of them so we have that done okay so we have them counted so now let's quickly and um, check so let's just say you want to just look at the features feature types again you can just say feature count dot keys And we are using this command because this object that is returned is a dictionary object. So that's why we use the keys just to get it. So these are the keys. So that means when we query for each of these feature types, you will get the count. So let's quickly do one of them. So if you should say feature count, let's say gen. We will get its count here. So we have 3,200 features that are of the category 
gen. Okay. Now we can also automate it to print each of these particular um, features and the account. So let's look at some ways of doing it. So first, let's just say for key value in feature counts dot item print key value. Okay, so notice we have all of them there. So because these are the keys, so what we are querying is that we want the items and items will retain the key and then the value. So that is what has been displayed here. So for each key value pair, you print the key and then the value and that is what we have here. Okay, so this is how we can quickly um, do that. Now, supposing we are not interested in regulatory, and then we are also, uh, yeah, regulatory, and then we are also not interested in the source. How can we um, remove them from this particular um, data? So we can quickly remove them using this command. So we can say Dell feature counts. Then we specify the key. Let's say source. Okay, and uh, let's also delete the regulatory. You can issue another command again, Dell feature counts regulatory. And you should make sure that you have the correct spelling given. Okay, so that Python doesn't issue an error. Okay, so these have been deleted. So we now have to query for the keys again. Feature counts dot keys. We read that it's gone. Okay, it's gone. Now we have this done. So, what about if you want to save it to an output file so that we can read it out of, we can read it outside Python? That's also very easy to do, and that is where we use the pandas library as well. So, in order to save this particular count here to an output file, we need to first save it in a data frame. So we will now first create the pandas data frame here. So we say data frame is equals to pd dot data frame. And then the data we specify is this feature count. So we say feature count dot items. Now with the data frame, we have columns and rows. So it's important we also give them some headers or column names. But since since pandas will create a data frame using the key value pairs, that means the keys will be in the first column and then the values will be in the second column. So you can issue this here. The column names here, so you can say column is equals to, and then we give the key here will be the feature, and then the value is the count. And so we have these columns also specified here. So once we have this set, we can now create a data frame. So now a data frame is created. You can quickly do an exploration of data frame. So you can say data frame. Shape. So we have six two. That means we are dealing with six features. That's the rows, and then we also have the columns, which is two. Notice we have them here as well. Okay. So we had what? After removing these keys or these features, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And we had the columns. That's the key, key value pair. So that is done. We can quickly print it out because we have just a few sample size here. So in the data frame, it prints it nicely fast in Jupyter in a table format here. So we have the feature and then the count. So notice how this result has been organized nicely for us using pandas. So this is how it's done.
So now we will now save it to an output file by first defining the name of the output file. So let's say output file is equals to we will save it in desktop. So say and now we give it the name. So let's just say feature count. We will save it in the CSV format. So let's add that extension. So we say dot CSV. Okay, so this is the output file. Make sure you specify the correct path and the path as a by path, I mean this particular um, directories. Okay, this file name here, this file will be created when you are doing the saving. So after that, we will now save this data frame using the file name we have defined here. So we say data frame dot to CSV. And then we have the output file. And then we say index equals false. These values here are indexes. But we will want to omit them in the output file so that we will have a cleaner um, data which we can read. So we will omit that. So once we have this command set for the saving, we will now save it. Okay, so now it has been saved. So once it has been saved, we can quickly go to where we saved it and then quickly open and view the output. So let's do that. I saved it on my desktop. And so this is where it is. Let me just go to my desktop. So in the part that you specified, you have it there and you have this name, this file name also generated that contains your results. So when you open it, then you can see your account. Okay, so let me zoom in for you to see. So notice how this has been done quickly and easily for us. So with the gene sequences, it's, its size is large, so it's practically impossible for humans to manually do some of these tasks such as counting. So that is where we rely on programming language to help us automate some of these tasks. And so with Python, it's not just about counting features in a single GenBank file, you can also automate this process to count features across multiple GenBank files as well. And that will be uh, my topic for the next tutorial. So once you have all these sets, it's time for you to start practicing and then wait for the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session. Goodbye.